This is the weekly lesson for study until the 17th of November, 2024. Subject, Remembrance Sunday. In the month of November, on the Sunday closest to the 11th, Remembrance Sunday takes place. The day is supposed to commemorate the war dead across the Commonwealth and British territories. But for younger generations, it is often perceived as incredibly dull. Since it is a historic ceremony involving the dead, it has been enshrined in our communities as being very important, reminding us that democracy is not an automatic right, it is something which was fought for at a great price with a loss of life. Our leaders gather at war memorials up and down the country and lay flowers, remembering all those who have died. In these days where we celebrate diversity and peace, ceremonies like this can seem a bit icky. In fact, for most of us, the ickiness of the day sits in direct contrast with modern living. The ceremony represents the face of Britain as it was in 1919, when the fast took place on Armistice Day in 1919. Over time, it has been expanded to include the Second World War and other conflicts in the world. Little has changed in the ceremony since 1919. The three faces of the government all come together. The monarchy, the church and the military all parade through the streets, looking like a reminder of days gone by. Despite the government telling us that Britain is now multicultural and politically correct, the ceremony itself is embarrassingly white. When I was a little boy in the 1980s, there were still people around who remembered the First World War, known as World War One, and Remembrance Sunday seemed much more important than it is today. World War One still encroaches on our lives today as well. If you work for a company here, you may be asked on certain days to observe a two-minute silence to remember the war dead on anniversaries of World War One. If I had a penny for every time I have been asked to respect a two-minute silence to remember the war, I would be a rich man by now. I stopped commemorating Remembrance Sunday some years ago. I really dislike the two-minute silence part at 11 a.m., when we are told we have to shut up for two minutes and remember those who died in the wars. That may have worked some years ago, but these days trying to get anyone to focus on something for two minutes is not likely to happen. I find the whole thing rather fake. I mean, billions are spent on having ceremonies remembering the glorious dead from the old British Empire. Why not just look at stopping war? Would that not be a better idea? Or forget about the ceremony and give the money to a charity instead? Then there's the royal commentary about the king and queen, who are, of course, leading the ceremony in London, dressed in black, wearing poppies on their jackets. A poppy is a little flower that you can see everyone wearing the week before the ceremony. It is a little paper flower, which is bright red and 
sometimes has a bit of green at the back. It is used as a symbol of remembering our war dead. Anyway, this year our queen has a chest infection, so she cannot attend. It is a very sombre affair. My grandmother used to say our royals all look like horses with their rather protruding teeth. And many people here refer to them as horsey, meaning they have horse features. I can imagine them nibbling on the flowers rather than laying them at the cenotaph. It's hard to escape. Every news channel in the UK has live coverage from London showing our royals arriving, looking more like they're going to the Oscars than the cenotaph. And today the Queen is wearing the pals gifted to her from the Sultan of Oman, and the King's coat was last seen worn at his mother's funeral. It is the epitome of boredom kitsch, and a ceremony which feels wrong in so many ways, it really is just ooh, icky. Last year, I forgot about the ceremony and tried to listen to radio on my phone at 11.01 a.m. Getting no sound, I immediately uninstalled the app, still heard nothing, and blamed my Bluetooth buds. Just before giving up and threatening to reset my whole phone, I heard a trumpet and realised it marked the end of the two-minute silence. My equipment was fine and started playing. I rolled my eyes, picked up my cat, and went to the other room to watch Angela Lansbury as Jessica Fletcher, in Murder, she wrote, solve another murder. It seemed the only way I could escape the boredom of the day. Earlier this year, it got quite exciting. In my local newspaper, there was an inquiry from volunteers who look after a war cemetery in the Netherlands, seeking contact with relatives of people buried there. The name was one of my mother's cousins, and I was able to pass photos and give a short biography of the man. The Dutch guy who wanted the info was really excited and clearly thought we were going to be best friends forever and share a love for researching the lives of young men who died tragically. From my point of view, it was interesting to know where Tommy was buried, but I never knew him. He died during the war. I only knew that it wasn't exactly a hero's death. He was stealing chickens from the enemy camp during World War Two, and sadly a bomb dropped while he was there. Maybe I will drop into the cemetery the next time I am in the Netherlands, but there's more chance of me being in the supermarket buying chicken rather than remembering Tommy this year. As much as I love family history, I never expected to be the last man standing with photos and biographies. I am only in my fifties after all, still very young. Anyway, after this ceremony, my attention will be turning to Christmas cards, another eccentrically British tradition, and I'll be looking at my Christmas card list to see who I got a card from last year and who is worthy of a card this year. If I don't get a card two years in a row from someone, then the person is removed from my list. This may be a far cry from Remembrance Sunday, but equally important in my opinion.